And this is one where there's a, a typo in the in the notes, right? On this part right here, gotta add in the word that. Okay. So it's it's th this one's okay. To take Kathy home, Sally left the party. And that's when you're talking about distal or proximal. And then if you're going the other way around, it's some lovers try positions that they can't handle. And then now if you're talking about now which is this going to be the proximal row or the distal row? Proximal, right. Okay, so we're going to have here the scaphoid, which is also called the navicular. The scaphoid means bowl shape. So it kind of has a, a curved shape like that. So this is the scaphoid or the navicular. Then you're going to have the lunate. And so that's going to be a moon shape. And then you have the trachytrium here. And then on the on the palmar surface of that is where you have the pisiform. And that's an easy one to spot. You can pretty much go to the corner of the palm right there. That's the pisiform. And then right on the back side of it here is the trichotrium. So if you're moving back and forth like that, that's the trichotrium and the pisiform right there. Right, so that's the proximal row. Then if you go with the distal row, is you have the trapezium and you have the trapezoid. And then as we come farther in here, then you have the capitate and then the hamate. And the hamate's another thing that you can palpate, is if you go from the piezoform right here, kind of go a little bit distal and a little bit uh, lateral, and that's the hook of the hammock. So remember, lateral is going to be towards the thumb, even though it looks like it's medial, it's technically lateral. So you can be right here on the pizza form, and then there's the hook of the hammock right there. Okay, we'll go around and do palpation later and get all go over this. But because basically if you come across here, you can feel it's more meaty, it's more of the muscle and you can feel the bone, and then you go farther over here, and then it's back to the muscle again. So that's the hook of the hammock, and then the piece of form down here. <coughs> and then you're going to have the, the vicular is, is going to be in that anatomical snuff box. So if I all our deviate, that's where those, the navicular or the scaphoid is going to pop out more. You can go here to the distal, the stylar to the radius, Press your follow the radius down like that, and then as you move your hand like this, you feel that bone come towards your finger, just distal to the stylus. That's going to be the navicular. And then you go distal to that is going to be the trapezius. Right, that's the scaphoid, right? Navicular <coughs> scaphoid, same thing. It is. Yeah. <coughs> right. It's two names for the same bone. But I guess well, I should say scaphoid because that's what we're talking about here in the United States. And the scaphoid or the navicular is the most common fractured bone in the ribs. And we talked before about a foosh, right? Falling on an outstretched hand. So let's say if you fall like this, a lot of times you're hitting on the, the, the scaphoid or the navicular. So anytime somebody has trauma and they have pain in the anatomical snuff box, you're typically going to assume that they have a scaphoid or an avicular fracture until proven otherwise. Because the problem with the fractures of the scaphoid is that the blood supply can get disrupted so you can have avascular necrosis of the scaphoid. to the, what are these again? The carpals. <coughs> and then there's going to be five. So you start with this thumb will be the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. And they're basically going to form the palm. And this portion of it here <coughs> is the base. So this is the base of the metacarpal, and they articulate with here, with what? The 
carpal. And, and then the distal part is called the head of the metacarpals, and that articulates with what? Phalanges, more specifically which phalanges? Proximal phalanges. Alright, so then uh, If you're talking about the articulations and you're going from the forearm out towards the fingers, you have the radial carpal joint. So remember like I was saying, the, the radius forms a more substantial portion of the wrist joint than the ulnar does. So you have the radial carpal joint and then you have the ulnar carpal joint. And then between the proximal row of carpals and the distal row of carpals, you have the intercarpal joint. And then as we move farther, then what's next? As we move from the carpals, what bones comes next? Mm -hmm. Metacarpal, see, what would you call those articulations? Mm -hmm. Yeah, carpal, metacarpal, and then we go to metacarpal phalanges, which is MCPs, then we go to uh, PIPs and VIPs. And what's PIP stand for again? It's a joint between the phalanges, so we'll call it interphalangeal joint, but there's more than one, so we have to differentiate the two. So what do we call this one? Proximal, so PIPs and PIPs. How many phalanges do we have in one hand? How many, how many phalanges on each finger? How many fingers? Okay, how many is on the thumb though? Okay, so 15 minus 1, 14. Okay, so you have 14 flanges on each hand. Because you have three in each, the second through the fourth, second through the fifth finger, and then on the thumb you only have two. So you have 14 flanges. So then how many bones are you going to have all together in one hand? You have how many phalanges? You have 15, 14. How many metacarpals? How many carpals? Eight. So that's 27? I don't know. So you see all the statues a lot of times when they have the upper extremity broken off, right? That could have been what it happened, how it happened. But. Okay. So then, we're not going to go over this today, but that's going to be the next thing that we're going to do after the midterm is talk more particular about the muscles of the upper extremity. Okay? We talked a little bit about the biceps and the triceps. And so we're going to review those. And we're going to do all the uh, muscles of the scapula, muscles crossing the shoulder joint. And we'll do that by way of reviewing and by doing some muscle testing. So we're probably going to be using uh, massage tables. So we'll go ahead and we'll take a break. Do like what we did last time, bring the tables out, and we'll do the palpation. <laughs>